How does Terraria not completely fry your computer and crash? Okay, wait. Maybe we need to take a few steps back. Question. How many tiles are on the screen right now? Keep in mind that one tile is absolutely tiny. A single tile is only 16 by 16 pixels large. So for a full 1080p screen, it can be filled with... Uh, let's see the area of the screen divided by the area of the tile. Over 8,000 tiles! Okay, next question. How many tiles are in the entire map of Terraria? Well, theoretically, there are infinitely many, since the map is procedurally generated. But you'll quickly reach tens, if not hundreds of thousands of tiles in the world. So you might say, okay, digit, big deal. Terraria has a lot of tiles, so what? Well, did you ever wonder how the game can handle that many tiles and still run smoothly? Keep in mind the game has to keep track of thousands upon thousands of tiles at the same time, and still manages to render at more than 60 frames per second easily. How does it do that? To fully understand the situation here, I have to explain a bit about rendering 2D graphics. The most bare bone 2D rendering applications work with a draw function. This function tells the computer what it should draw on the screen. The draw function is executed every single frame. So, for 60 frames per second, every single instruction in this function is performed 60 times every second. So let's say I want to draw a rectangle on the screen and move it to the right. I'd just say, draw it at position 0 and every frame draw it one pixel further to the right. However, keep in mind that this function is rather naive. Think of the draw function as a painter we can give instructions. Right now, we are basically telling a painter to keep drawing rectangles on his canvas. So we just get a smear of rectangles on our screen. Instead, we have to tell our painter to completely clear his canvas and then redraw the rectangle. And if we do that, we can see that our rectangle starts moving properly. And this is how the basics of 2D graphics work. 60 times per second, the entire screen is cleared and then every single sprite is redrawn. So knowing that, let's see what happens when we start rendering a small world which is 3 screens large. Which adds up to about 25,000 tiles. And already you start seeing the effect where the game drops from 60 to under 30 frames per second. Drawing every single one of these tiles, clearing the screen and then completely redrawing them for every frame uh, can be a lot of work. But we're not just rendering tiles. The tiles in Terraria have some kind of functionality. They can be destroyed or sometimes crops or trees can grow in them. So let's add some very basic functionality to every single tile. How about making every tile keep track of time? So every frame, we simply add the time passed since our last frame to our timer. And now the game is almost unplayable. This is just too much for the computer to handle 60 times per second. Not only does it have to render every single tile for every single frame, it also has to perform a calculation for all the tiles in the world every single frame. Clearly, this is taking way too long to perform 60 times per second. But this is just for a couple of thousand tiles. The world of Terraria has many, many more tiles than that. So, how does Terraria not completely fry our computer and crash? Obviously, Terraria has optimized its tile rendering so that it can be run in real time, even on lower end systems. But how did it do that? I'd like to go over a couple of things we could do to lessen the burden on our computer and making it possible to create a world with so many tiles. The first technique we can use is one of the most basic things any game engine can do. Frustum culling. In computer graphics, the field of view of a camera is called a view frustum. And this is basically a pyramid shape which contains everything the camera can see. Frustum culling simply means we just bother rendering the tiles that are inside this pyramid, or frustum. By applying frustum culling, we get a huge performance boost. Since now, instead of rendering all the tiles in the entire scene, we just render the tiles that are visible. Which makes us go from rendering a hundred thousand tiles every frame, to just a few thousand tiles. But we've only just begun. We can gain another huge performance boost by cleverly enabling and disabling certain tiles. For instance, tiles that are outside of our view and very far away from the player won't be interacted with. So we can just disable those tiles altogether, saving us some computing power. But we'd still need to check every single individual tile, which is a lot of work for our poor computer. But what if we made it just a lot easier by clumping groups of tiles together into large chunks? 
So now, instead of checking for every single individual tile if it should be active or not, we can just check large chunks of tiles and enable or disable those chunks together. This way, we can quickly and easily disable any tiles we don't need and save a f ton of work. Okay, next question. If a tree falls in Terraria and it isn't happening on your screen, does it still make a sound? Okay, maybe that was a bad analogy. What I'm trying to say is, if we're only activating the tiles around our player, is it still possible for things to happen outside of our view? Well, we can see evidence that this is possible. After all, trees and crops can still grow outside of our view. So that means the tiles are still active even when they're very far away from us, right? Well, if that were the case, we'd still go back to our old problem of performing an action for every single tile in the world. Which is exactly what we don't want to do. So if we can't update every single tile in real time, how is it possible that they can still change off screen? Well, what if instead of running a timer in real time for every tile, we just store the time when it was last activated? After all, we can only see real time updates for the tiles that are actually on screen. So it wouldn't make sense to update tiles that are off screen as well. If we just store when a tile was last active and we later revisit a tile, we can just compare our current time and the tile store time to determine how much time has passed. And based on that, we decide how far our trees have grown or how much grass is still there or how many mobs should have spawned. And that is how Terraria doesn't completely fry your computer and crash. It's just a series of simple tricks that help the game keep track of many, many tiles without any large performance impact. But there's another huge aspect of Terraria we haven't talked about yet. How does it generate these tiles? How can I create a world randomly which still makes sense? This we'll discuss in our next episode. Procedural Generation. I hope it was interesting to learn a bit about rendering 2D graphics. I'd love to see you in the next episode, but for now, I hope you're at least a bit wiser.